Now, so if we get started with some verbal reasoning, how are we feeling about that so far? What do we think? So how are we finding verbal reasoning? So some people don't like it. Some people really like it. Uh, it seems like a lot more of you today are a little bit unhappy with your verbal reasoning. Now, what you want to keep in mind is kind of no matter how you feel about a section, you should definitely make sure you're preparing it at least a little bit. And if you find that something you dislike or you're really struggling with, that's probably one you actually want to spend a little bit more time on if you can. So for verbal reasoning, one reason why a lot of people sometimes struggle is that it's extremely time pressured. So you've got 44 questions to answer in 21 minutes, which would work out to about 30 seconds per question. Now, I'm not going to say you should stick to exactly 30 seconds because some of them are going to be a bit harder and some of them are going to be a bit easier. So you might be a little bit better off instead of 30 seconds per question, maybe think about it in terms of 11 sets. And if you've got 11 sets, 44 minutes, then you, sorry, 21 minutes, then you want to be spending about two minutes per set you do. So every four questions, try and stick to about two minutes, two and a half minutes. And if you find that some of the questions there you're not going to be able to do in about two minutes, two and a half minutes, those are the ones you probably want to learn to recognize so you can make sure you skip some of them. And in terms of what kind of questions you might want to be skipping, it's going to be some of your reading comprehension questions. So in verbal reasoning, you've got two different kinds of questions. You've got your true, false, can't tell which are the ones that ask you for specific things and you need to check whether they're true or false. But you also have some of these reading comprehension questions like complete the statement according to the passage, which of the following are true? And so for these kind of questions where they're not asking you for specific things, you may want to skip some of these ones. And so if we take a look at the different kinds of questions you get in your verbal reasoning, we have quite a few different examples here. So to start off with, you've got your true, false, can't tell. They're going to ask you specific things. You're going to check, are they true? Are they false? Are they can't tell? And for these ones, you can generally answer them just by skimming and scanning for keywords. So you want to try and get as many of these possible done and definitely not skip them. Then you've got your four option questions, but some of them may also ask you for specific things. So like, which of the following happened due to X, Y, Z reason? Or which of the following dates did this event happen on? So these kind of questions that are asking you for specific things, like specific person, specific name, specific date. For those ones, you can just look for the relevant keyword or key idea and use that to answer the question. So these kind of questions, you want to make sure you try and get every single time. And if you compare to some of these ones, which are like, which of the following can be inferred? Well, for that question, you can't exactly look for the keyword following or the keyword inferred. You're going to have to check all the four answer options. And because some of these questions are going to take you a little bit longer, which of the following is true, which of the following can be inferred. If you find that one of the passages is super long or super difficult, you might want to skip one of those. So the sort of things you're keeping in mind whenever you see a VR question, is it long, the passage? Is it complicated, the passage? And is it tricky, the question? So is the question asking you for something specific or is it very general that's going to require you to read a lot more of the passage? And we're going to take a look at how you approach these different kinds of questions in a second. But just before we do that, a quick reminder of the kind of timestamps you want to make sure you're following. So when we have 21, question, 21 minutes to answer 44 questions, that means you're at about 30 seconds each. And so what that means is, for example, if you're on question number 24, then you can see that if you've got 44 questions, you've got about 20 questions left. And so you should expect, because it's 30 seconds per question, you want to have about half the number of minutes left on your timer. So if you're at question number 24, you want to make sure you have about 10 minutes left. 
And what I would recommend is in the minute you have before you start verbal reasoning, so you're going to have a minute to think and read the instructions before you actually start during your UCAT. So in that one minute, what I recommend is you write down some timestamps. So for example, when I get to question number 24, I want to have about 10 minutes left. And in the same way, you can work out some timestamps for other question points. So like when I'm on question number 33, I want to have about five to six minutes left. And you want to make sure that when you're at that stage, if you're doing not too well for time, then maybe try speeding up or skipping a little bit more questions. Because what you definitely want to make sure doesn't happen is you get to the end and you miss stuff out. Because imagine some of the questions at the end were these true false can't tell that so you could have answered in a lot less time. So in terms of how many you want to answer, generally speaking, we say for the average person, it's about 34. But it does really depend on what your reading speed is. So if you read really fast, you might be able to get 40, 41 questions done. And if you don't read as fast, you might only be getting 30 questions done. But either way, you can always improve. And what you want to see is where you're at right now. And so if you're struggling to finish right now, then maybe you want to skip a little bit more questions. Make sure you get to the end. And if you're finding that you're finishing with time to spare, then maybe you skip a little bit fewer questions and you give yourself more time to answer a couple more. So if we get started and we start off by looking at one of these questions that asks you specific things. So these are like true, false, can't tell, or these are like questions that ask you about specific people, names, dates, that sort of thing. So if we start off with this question here, you can see it's asking you very specifically all about gambling and financial difficulty. So those would be the kind of things you look out for, gambling and financial difficulty. What you might want to do to start off with is just have a think about using your own knowledge, what is going to be a likely answer option. And that just means that if imagine you spend 20 seconds and you can't find anything and you're getting to the point that you might be giving up, you always know what might be a sensible or an educated guess. Now, I'm not recommending you use your own knowledge to answer these questions because, for example, this one could be can't tell and it might not be mentioned in the passage. But what you might want to have a think about is can you use your own knowledge to give you an idea about what is a reasonable choice here? So is it likely to be on the true side or is it likely to be on the false side? And then that's going to help you with what kind of things to have a look with in the passage. So, for example, for this question, asking you about whether gambling is an easy and effective way out of financial difficulty. Well, you know that gambling is something that's pretty risky and it can be addictive. So it's not really good for your financial situation. And so if you saw this question, then you might immediately think that it's not going to be true. It's probably going to be either false or can't tell. So now your approach might be to look in the passage, for example, for something being difficult or something being ineffective or maybe gambling being risky. Rather than looking for the words easy and effective, you might be skimming for the risks of gambling or maybe some of the problems with gambling. And that's the reason why you might want to start off by using your own knowledge a little bit to guide you. And so for these kind of questions that ask you specific things, you're going to look for key words, key ideas, and identify the relevant sentence. And once you identify the relevant sentence, you're going to take your time to understand that particular sentence in your own words and then pick the answer option that relates. So for this kind of question, what do we think is going to be the best keyword? Any ideas? So for this question, what would be a good keyword? So a lot of people are saying restorative justice and other people saying ministry of justice. Now, how I would recommend deciding? Well, the first thing is if something is a capital letter or a name, that's going to be quite easy to find. Uh, it'll just stand out alongside the whole text. So firstly, if you're ever seeing something that's a capital letter or a name, that's probably a better one to go for. But more importantly, what I would be really wary of is if you pick a key word and it's one of the first few words of the passage. So like this passage is all about restorative justice and it's the first two words of the passage. 
that's probably not going to be a very good thing to look for because the whole thing is going to be about restorative justice. So what my recommendation would be is in this case, you're looking for Ministry of Justice research, as that's the specific thing that we're being asked about. And so if we were to identify the relevant section, Ministry of Justice research, then for this question, that's all you need to read and understand. So the section about Ministry of Justice research. And I wouldn't try and read everything. I would just specifically read this and take your time to try and get to an answer. And so if we read this section, what it can, we can see it tells us is that Ministry of Justice research tells us that it works. So it reduces reoffending, and also it saves you money. So for every one pound you spend, you get nine pounds back. And so now that we know that it works and that it saves money, which one of these answer options, A, B, C, and D, do you think talks about something working and something saving money? Really good. So cost effective, and everyone is correct. So the key idea here is to make sure you find the sentence, you understand it, and you then pick the answer option. What you don't really want to do is to look at the answer options first and check if they're there. Now, reason being, more than one of these answer options might actually be in the passage. So, for example, if you take a look at option B, because victims like it, and if you look at the paragraph here, second paragraph, you can see it talks about um, a 15-year-old boy committing an attack, and the manager, who was kind of the sufferer or the victim of the attack, really happy with the event. So he says that a lot of good came out of it, and he got a lot out of his meeting. So that clearly relates to victims liking it, because the victim found that a lot of good came out of it. So what you don't want to do is to work backwards from these answer options in this case, reason being because more than one of them is likely going to be there. So in this case, victims liking it is also in the passage. And we can see here that victims do like restorative justice. But that's not the answer because it's got nothing to do with Ministry of Justice research. So key idea here is identify what the question is asking you, look for the answer in your own words, pick the one that relates, rather than just looking for key words. So in this case, victims like it, yeah, it's there, but it doesn't answer the question. Got nothing to do with Ministry of Justice research. So same idea here. And this time, what I'm gonna ask you to do differently is not put the answers right away. So don't put the answers straight on the chat until I say to do so. Give other people a chance to figure it out. And so for this question, I'm going to say, have a look at the question and have a think about what the best keyword might be. And in about 10, 15 seconds, then put your answer in the chat. So have a think about good keywords here. And now put your answers in the chat. So just about the keywords, not about the answer, just about the keywords. Yeah, very good. So everyone saying spectacularly bright, that's going to be a much better option for this one than Qhutec. Reason being because the word Qhutec is absolutely everywhere. So if it's one of the first few words of the passage, then the word Qhutec is not going to be a good idea. So you want to identify a sentence that tells you about expectations for Qhutec being bright. And so if we take a look, anything about spectacular and being bright, and we can see that those words are somewhere here near the start. So we now want to identify a sentence that specifically talks about why you would expect Qhutec to be bright. And so this is the relevant sentence. And so could anyone say in your own words what that sentence is talking about? So just put it in the chat, what is that sentence telling you? So a lot of people are talking about distance. And so you're seeing the numbers 21. 
Now, just because you have the number 21 million here does not mean that the answer is A, 21 million. So what you're seeing here is it's giving you a certain reasoning. And it's saying that at a certain point in time, this comet was 800 million kilometers away from the sun. And we're saying that if you could see the comet back when it was all that far away. So when it was 800 million kilometers away, if you could see the comet back then, then when it's gonna come super close, when it's gonna come to 21 million, is gonna be extremely bright, no doubt. So you need to look for a reason that you were saying because of this, therefore this. And so the reason why is because when it was 800 million kilometers away, you could see it. Therefore, when it comes super close, it's going to be bright. So the reason why your because part is going to be answer option B, because you could see it when it was 800 million kilometers away. Now, does that make sense about why you want to take your time to understand the sentence and not just pick 21 million kilometers? So actually understand what's going on and not just see that the number 21 million is there. So does that make sense? Yeah. And so for these kind of questions that are asking you for specific things, the best approach is to make sure that you take your time with the one relevant sentence. Now, if you were to read through the whole thing, skim through the whole thing, that's not really going to improve your answer in any way. What you'd want to actually do is spend a little more time on this sentence here before you pick your answer. So as fast as possible until you identify the relevant sentence. And once you find the relevant sentence, then you take your time. So in terms of where you're going to spend your time, don't try and read the whole thing. Try and skim till you get to the right place. And once you get to the right place, then you try and figure it out. Now, that's not necessarily the approach you want to take for every single question out there. This is specifically what you're doing for the questions that are asking you particular things. So that's what I've described as our green questions. And they're the ones which have good keywords in, where you can just look for a relevant sentence that contains the answer. Now, not all of your questions are going to ask you for specific things like this. Like some of them might be, which of the following is most likely to be true? And so when you get some of those kind of questions, what you want to do is a little bit different. And so you might want to read a slightly bigger portion of the passage. And you might want to try and skim through and get a little bit of an understanding before you look for your four answer options one at a time. So that's for your general questions, which are like, which of the following can be inferred? Or which of the following is likely to be true? But before we get on to them, we also have kind of this middle difficulty type. And the middle difficulty type are the ones where you don't necessarily have to read the whole thing, but you also can't just read one particular sentence. So it's a little bit in between. And those are ones where you kind of have tricks or things you could do to help lead you to the answer. So one example of these middle difficulty types is if you had a question that's all about the opinion of the author. And so if you've got a question that asks you about the author's opinion, then one thing you might want to do is to go and read the introduction or to go and read the conclusion. And the introduction and the conclusion, especially for any political sort of passages, will usually contain the answer. So when you're dealing with author's opinion, you might want to head to either the introduction or the conclusion. And when you're dealing with the questions that are about main theme of the passage, in that case, you might just want to read the first sentence of each paragraph. So we're going to try one of those tricks now for this question over here. And so this question is asking, what does the text mainly refer to? Now, this is not something you can look for keywords in, but it is a question I recommend going ahead and answering. And reason being because we have the trick that I mentioned before. So what we're going to do is read the first bit of each paragraph and in your own words, say what that's about. So the first bit says, mangroves, where do you find them? The next bit says, mangroves, why are they important for wildlife and people? The next bit, mangroves, why are they important for fish? 
And the last bit, mangroves, why are they important as a carbon reserve? Now, when you decide on your four options, what they're all about, what you want to then do is pick the answer that relates to the majority of your four paragraphs. So we said one of them is about where do you find mangroves? Three of them are about why are mangroves going to be important for wildlife, fish and carbon forests? So which one of these relates to the majority of paragraphs we've got here? What do we think? Really good. So the answer here is B, importance of mangroves to people and the environment. And the reason why, again, I recommend this method and not just reading through the whole thing is because if you were to read through the whole thing, you'd find that some of these other answer options are also there. Like if I was to draw your attention to the last paragraph and we see where it discusses the rate of carbon storage, you can see how it compares mangroves to temperate forests and tropical forests. So that's actually exactly the same as answer option D. So answer option D is also in the passage. It is there, but again, it's not what the text mainly refers to. So for these questions, best approach is read the first bit of each paragraph. Now, finally, we've got our third kind of question. And so our third kind of question, if we go back, are the ones that ask you about very general things. So they're not asking you specific things where you can just look for keywords. And they're not about main theme of the passage or opinions of the author. So anything that's left, and anything that's about which of the following is likely to be true, all of the following are true except, or anything that does not fit into the categories that we've just talked about, you're gonna have to approach them in a slightly different way. And so for these kind of questions, the best thing that you can do is to take a look at um, the four answer options and to see which one you think is most likely to be correct. Now, for these questions, because you don't have one specific thing to look for, you're going to have to check three or four answer options. So what you want to do to start off with is to take a look which one of these answer options you think is likely to be the right answer. And then what you might want to do is just skim through the passage and find out what information is where. So unlike the other two question types that we just spoke about, so these questions that just ask you general things, like which of these statements is best supported? For these ones, I do recommend your approach is gonna be, read the question, take a look at the answer options, and then have a quick skim through the whole thing. So that's not spending ages and ages, but it does mean give yourself maybe 10 seconds to find out approximately what information is found where. And once you've done that, you then have your four answer options here. So we're going to have to check these answer options, and we're not going to have to check all four of them. Worst case scenario, we're going to be checking three. So what I would recommend you do is if you have any kind of own knowledge about the topic, I would use that own knowledge to have a think about which one of these I think is likely to be correct. So out of A, B, C, and D, what do you think without looking at the passage? So for now, I don't want you to use the passage. Which one of these do you think could be correct based on your own knowledge? Yeah, really good ideas, everyone. So we think it's probably going to be B. So B is saying that natural selection depends on chance events. And you know from your GCSE or A-level biology that that fits with your current understanding about natural selection. So now what I would do is answer this just like a true false can't tell. And I would specifically go and look for any information about natural selection. And having already skimmed through the passage, you're going to take a look for any information about natural selection, which might be over here. And so based on reading that, what do we think? Is B supported or is B not supported? So if we say that natural selection does not require a designer, so if we don't need any kind of designer, does that follow that something happens by chance? What do we think?
Yeah, really good. So if we have something that's not got a designer, no one's organizing it, then that means it's happening by chance. Because if someone was designing it, then obviously there's a reason, there's a cause. If there's no designer, then it's happening by chance. So that means B is supported. And we actually also know that A is false. But at that point, I would pick B and move on. Now, someone has raised a really valid point, And what they've said is that maybe you shouldn't use your own knowledge because it might not be there. Now, what I'm saying to you is not just to use your own knowledge to pick an answer, remember? What I'm saying is you should use your own knowledge just to decide what to check. So out of these four options, we've started off by checking B. And if we find that B is not there, then you'll go on and check A, C, and D. So I'm not saying you just use your own knowledge. It's just you're going to use your own knowledge to get started. So that's the first thing you want to keep in mind. Now, if you don't have any own knowledge about a passage, and that's going to happen for quite a lot of them, what you want to think about is maybe which one of these is the easiest to check. So if there's no own knowledge, then you might pick the answer option that has a name, a number, a date, a place, because that's going to take you less time to check. And remember, worst case scenario, we're only ever checking three of them. So check the one you think is right. If you've got no clue what's right, then check the one you think is going to be really easy to check. And if you don't know which one is going to be easy to check, then you might want to look at the language. And so if one of the things have words like all, always, every, none, that's probably going to be the false one. And if one of them have words like might, maybe, could, then that's probably going to be the uh, correct one. And if you find that there's a passage which you have absolutely no own knowledge about, and it's one of these trickier sorts of questions, well, that might be an indication for the kind of questions that you then skip. So in terms of what you're looking for when you skip a question, definitely one of these sorts of questions where it's asking you not something specific. And then you might want to have a think about how much do you know about the topic? How long is the passage? How complicated is the passage? So that might be one of the factors you consider. Difficulty of the question, but also how much you know about the passage already. So that's the kind of things you want to think about. Now, the final thing I want to say is I know someone has said, why is C not correct? So just to point out, the reason why C is not correct is because we've said quite clearly here, the universe operates to known rules. So if the universe operates to known rules, that doesn't necessarily support that it does not depend on hidden rules. Because just because we have some known rules doesn't mean that there couldn't be hidden ones as well. So because we have known ones, we could also have hidden ones alongside that. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're not hidden ones. So this is not the same thing as C. And so I hope that answers your question, uh, Khadija.